If you ask any car enthusiast this very Lord of the Rings question, which is, you can have one car to rule them all, and what car do you want? I can guarantee you every single one's gonna say this, the Audi RS6. And that's because Audi have a massive reputation in building up-punching, supercar-killing wagons. They've been doing it for 30 years now. They started with the RS2, built by Porsche and Audi, and about 10 years later, the Audi RS6 was introduced. And since, has been a universal standard of approval, a universal standard for daily drivers. It is literally the benchmark for the best daily driver in the world. And this one, the 2023 model, has got even more stupid. It has 460 kilowatts, 830 newton meters, and gets to 100 kilometers an hour in less than 3.5 seconds. I can't tell you how friggin' fast this car is, but we're gonna find that out a bit later. But one other question I wanna ask you is, how come you don't see any on the road? They cost $250,000, that's a lot of money, but then so does your mate's GLE 63, and you see half a million of those on the road. So we're gonna find out today too about why this car is rare. Is it rubbish now? Has it timed out? Is it too powerful? Or is it irrelevant? Well, that's what we're gonna have a look at today, as I've said for the fourth time. What we're gonna do is have a look at the car, have a look under the bonnet, have a look in the interior, put it on the hoist, lift it up, have a look at all the cool stuff underneath, rear wheel steering, quattro differential, all of that crap from the manual. And then we're gonna hit the road and answer that question. And that is, is the RS6 still the absolute daddy of dailies? Let's go and find out, guys. Are you sure you wanna put it on the hoist? Absolutely, and this time I'm gonna call you a dickhead when I do it. Let's go, come on. Before I tell you about the car you can't afford, let's quickly see if you can afford it by screening you. This is an Audi RS6 Avant Performance. It costs $241,500 as it stands. If you want a bunch of options like this one has, 22 inch wheels for free, an RS design package in blue, which is some blue seat belts, a Matt Gregg stereo styling package and carbon inlays with a blue thread, you're at about $247,200 or give or take $260,000 to $270,000 drive away in your garage with your bank manager really upset and you're better off hating you for spending nearly 300 grand on a car. There you go, so that's how much it costs. Now, let's look under the bonnet to see what's going on. Under the bonnet, you'll find Audi's very familiar four litre twin turbocharged V8 as per the Lamborghini Urus and the Audi RS Q8. It's a familiar engine, it's used in every one of their high performance vehicles. In this 2023 trim, it now makes 463 kilowatts, 850 newton meters, and goes from zero to 100 in less than 3.5 seconds. Mate, this engine is an absolute powerhouse. And if you look at it too, it looks a bit interesting, and I'll briefly explain why. The inlet ports for this V are on the outside. The exhaust ports are on the inside. That means all of the turbocharging gear can be housed inside the V. Water to air cooler, turbos, the whole lot is located in the guts of the engine. What does that mean more broadly? Well, the inlet tract from intake to throttle body is about this long, which means the engine has little, little paths for lots of compressed air to flow through and make heaps of power and low end torque. It's pretty much how Audi make this engine as responsive as it can be. It's also linked to a torque converter transmission, but what we're gonna do now is show you that transmission by putting this car on the hoist, lifting it up and discussing what's underneath it. Fastest car ever, hot sour. Yeah, what you reckon? Fastest car ever, you ready gonna time me on this one? All right, let's go. It's like some F1 pit stop shit. Really, really quick. All right. You got a lot of people. Uh, you got a lot of people upset about this, mate. Mate, a lot of people. Even my friend's son is like, "You just take too long on the hoist, and you swear too much." So even the ten-year-olds are not into it, mate. I've got to sort this out. But now, honestly, it's a new car, right? So you can literally jam a fucking hoist under it in about a second because with new cars, they've thought about this stuff. And you, go, you know what? People are probably gonna lift it up on a hoist, so let's put some stuff there to lift it up and make it easy. There you go. Within 10 seconds now, it'll be in the air. And see what's underneath this bad boy, eh? You reckon that's done? I reckon that's done. Under the Audi RS6, you're gonna notice it's really, really complicated. Let's quickly have a look now. Start with the exhaust. It's 
twin massive exhaust system that sort of comes out into two mufflers. The mufflers have flaps in them. We love cars with flaps. However, the exhaust gases sort of come back in and meet each other again here. Maybe it's an exhaust gas circulation thing. Maybe it's just a noise thing. I don't know. But yeah, there's like another muffler connecting the other mufflers. Very strange. What else do we have? We've got a rear wheel steering system here. This is an Audi RS6 performance, which means it gets the sport differential and rear wheel steering. You've got these arms here connected to a little motor that sort of twist left and right and give this rear axle some steering. So there you go, quite complicated. We've got some really nice alloy control arms. We've got some aero on the control arms, so the air passes over it at high speeds. It's kind of cool. That sport differential, which I mentioned here, this is a very, very cool, 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 very cool electrical mechanical locking differential that does all sorts of awesome stuff. 70% of the power that goes to the back, it can determine where power goes, but it has a mechanical element to it, so it feels quite natural. But yeah, only available on the performance model. What else do we have here? We've got heaps of marine carpet. Sal mentioned that before, he's a four wheel driver, one of those blokes who goes in the bush, and he reckons that looks like marine carpet. And I reckon this time he's actually right. It's the one useful piece of information Sal has given us all year. Up in front here, we've got these meaty, meaty brakes. You should see these things. 440 millimeters of disc. It is absolutely huge. There is lots of suspension arms here too. It's a top A-arm in alloy, a lower A-arm in alloy. These epic, huge brake ducts with heaps of fins on them. Yeah, just lots of, it's even got two ball joints on the, cell, on the front cell. Excuse me, I'm getting a bit excited here. It has two ball joints on the front. That's quite unusual that. It must be a pretty serious car this to have two ball joints, but it does weigh 2.2 tons, give or take. So there you go. But yeah, lots of alloy control arms, lots of exotic car, and yeah, lots of, lots of, what am I trying to say here? Lots of electronic things that make you maybe a better driver than you are. But we're gonna find it out when we take this thing on the road in a second. Two ball joints, so you can break two of them, four of them. In one go. When, I you hit, when you hit the gutter in, uh, in neutral bay. Yeah. <laughs> this car does have 22 inch wheels on in it too, which does worry me. I can imagine that hitting a pothole would probably hurt your wallet a little bit. But yes, two ball joints to go wrong. You are correct, my friend. One thing I've never seen before on a car is internal gutter ash. I used to joke about this with my friends in my old job that we used to live around North Sydney and see all these Maseratis and Ferraris with gutter ash wheels because everyone's just curb parking them. But weirdly on the Audi, there is gutter ash all on the inside of the wheel. I have no idea how that would have happened. Maybe someone falling off a driveway or a curb. But honestly, the more important thing of this whole conversation is these factory tires are stretched. These wheels are probably too big for these tires, meaning the tire sort of stretches around the bead and you get the lip exposed. So yeah, if you do own one of these cars, be really careful because you may end up with gutter ash on the inside of your wheels for some strange reason. Very odd. In the two seconds before we hit the road, let's quickly cover off the cabin of the Audi RS6 Performance. Start with the seats. Heated, ventilated, well bolstered, really adjustable, super comfy. Materials, we've got Valcona leather, a high-end leather, and Alcantara everywhere. I love it. What's a performance car without Alcantara? What else do I love? I love this gauge cluster. When you press RS, it gives you a boost gauge, power, torque, and an awesome ref counter. I love a boost gauge, it reminds me of a bit of JDM. What else is there? Heaps of flashy lights, heaps of in interesting textures. We've got this interesting resinless carbon fiber that I don't like personally. You find it in BMWs, this one's got a blue twill. You might like it, you might think I'm an idiot, who cares, it's in the car. But yeah, that's pretty much it here. Sporty seats, really good driving position, heaps of Alcantara and lots of performance gauges. Let's jump in the back quickly and see what's going on there. I'm not going to jump in the back of this car because you don't buy an Audi RS6 to put adults in the back. You buy an Audi RS6 because you've got offspring. You've procreated, you've found a better half, you've done the deed, and now you've got some kids. So yeah, like I have. And even more proof, I've been using this car as a family car. Here's my son Supra. He loves this car. That's why it's in the back here because he's been riding around with me in this Audi RS6 for the past week. So what I have here are one Brightax convertible seat, suitable from the ages zero to six and a booster seat as well. So that seat can be rearward facing for babies. This is for older kids. And as you can see, there's heaps of room here. You can throw your kids in. You can literally throw them in like I do. Plenty of room here. Dual zone climate control in the back. So quad zone in total, four zones of climate control. Different air con uh, fan speeds, USBs, air vents. There you go. You can fit kids in the back. Plenty of room and plenty of amenity as well. Let's quickly look in the boot now and see what's going on there. 
As you'd expect for a wagon, there is about 600 litres of boot space here. What does that mean to you? I don't know, we always say litres, 600 litres, 500 litres. Nobody actually knows what that means. So what we're gonna do now is put some 15 and 16 inch Japanese wheels in the back of this thing to see how big this boot is. Let's go. Go on, you good thing. Go on, you good thing. Go on, you good thing. Mate, seven wheels in the back of this Audi RS6. If you have a race car and you want a support vehicle, this thing is the perfect car. Let's hit the road guys. guys we're behind the wheel of the Audi RS6 performance and the first thing I will say is that in regular mode it pretty much feels like an Audi A4 there's nothing in this car when you're driving it at least to tell you it is fruity the exhaust is really really quiet if anything too quiet when it's not on loud mode with the flap open the ride comfort unbelievable I've noticed this car for some reason has really really abnormal tire pressures which we'll fix later but even with these really high tire pressures the car rides unbelievably. It's pretty amazing to think of this 2.2 ton vehicle with all of this performance, all of this inherent stiffness, and still goes down the road better than most other SUVs. It's pretty bloody incredible. But then again, Audi have been the masters of air suspension for quite some time. You jump in any SQ5 and you realize that they're just really good at doing air sus. So here we are on our busy road and make this road busy by bumpy and all over the shop. And look at it, it is so comfy for a high performance car. I am absolutely amazed at the suspension in this car. The Southern Highlands is known for its really crappy pieces of unrepaired roads. Our council are that crap. They've been dissolved because they don't fix the roads around here. And this car, mate, it literally irons them out. If you want to drive around the Southern Highlands and not shake your fat bits and not spill your coffee, you probably want an Audi RS6. So yeah, ride comfort is excellent. Another thing I'm going to talk to you about on this road review is that we're not going to talk about, you know, how delicate the steering is or, you know, how it feels on a limit because you can't drive this car on the limit on the public road. I've had it for a week and I've been caning it up and down some beautiful back roads here and even then going quite fast the car doesn't even feel alive like you have to be on a bloody racetrack to get any semblance of movement out of this car so we're not going to talk about that what we're going to talk about is what it's like on a daily drive so one thing you're probably going to do is you want to see how quick it is let me just knock it down a couple of gears put it in a second we'll wind it up this hill we'll give it a bit of a stab Are you ready? Oh Jesus Christ, it's fast, far out. It is a really fast car, this one. And I'm not just saying that because I use that word a lot. It is fucking fast. It is extremely fast. Um, it's just the torque that really gets you. As you can see, the sort of, you probably see Sal because he doesn't go to the gym, he hasn't got heaps of core. The whole camera just fly back because he can, even he can't withstand the torque of the mighty Ingle Start Monster that is the Audi RS6. It's just silly. Like up this hill here, I will literally put Sal back in his seat, I'll show you. Um, all right, all right, you ready for this, guys? Feel this. Oh, Jesus. Mate, why do you need a car that does that? Honestly, it is so quick. It, it's just ridiculous. So, yeah, in terms of performance, adequate. Um, there is plenty of performance here and probably more than you ever need. Is it a bit much? Yes. Is it a bit synthesized? Yes, I feel so. Like, honestly, 460 kilowatts and 850 newton meters doesn't necessarily manifest that smoothly and that cleanly normally. And the reason it does is that pretty much when you put your foot down or when you turn the wheel or you put any input in this car, a computer makes all of those decisions. It decides where the power should go. It decides how the power should come out. And honestly, you do feel that in the car, even on the road. Even though you're not caning it and doing you know, a million miles an hour and getting 11 tenths out of it, you still feel that level of computer processing even when you squeeze the throttle, which is a little bit disconcerting to be fair. Oh, that's third gear, just lugs this thing. Big torque, we'll put it through this corner here at a bit of pace, wind it out the other end. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty big. Um, but down. I will, mate. Trying to hold the yeah. <laughs> this is a car that will upset your cameraman. It's got that much turning force, but no, all of your inputs are filtered. They are processed. There's algorithms, there's computers 
there are things determining the outcome. And one way you notice that is every time you get on the throttle, you get a slightly different response, depending on how much steering you have and where you're going and the surface conditions and all that crap. Like the accelerator pedal is not consistent. Sometimes it will wind the car up heaps hard, other times a little bit less and then harder later up in the rev range. It's really inconsistent, the pedal on the street. And that's because there is that much power, the car is sort of saying, okay, I'll give you this much now, I'll give you this much this time, now I'll give you all of it. So it's sort of determining that for you. So yeah, it does feel a bit processed. Does that make it not exciting? No, as you can see, I'm smiling, Sal's smiling, we're both laughing, it's hilarious fun. But it is not a raw, unhinged, gonna beat you up sort of brawler that you'd expect from this car. I've driven a bunch of older RS6s, I've driven heaps of Audi RS product for that matter, and even BMW M cars and some of that stuff. And some of the older stuff, it had this nice sharp edge to it where the car looked tough, then when you got on it and turned it on, it felt tough. It felt gnarly, it felt spiky, and it felt like it was gonna kill you. Whereas this car, it doesn't do that. It's really sanitized, right? Um, and that's half of its problem, I guess. You sort of buy this car because you want it to be an all-out crazy thing, and it's just not. It's just a bit filtered. So what we're gonna do now is we'll roll up here to some better roads, and we'll start the footage again, and we'll have another go in some areas that are a bit more conducive to some performance driving. Let's go. Here we are on our twisty road. Let's give it a poke and see how she goes. Up the hill first. Oh, mate. Mega. This car is mega. Yeah, look, it's unquestionable the amount of performance that is in this vehicle. Just listen to it. Yeah, it's a bit of a beast. An interesting point about it too, it does feel a bit lighter than the figures suggest and that's got a lot to do with that rear wheel steering. One of the things I've noticed around town with this car is that you can chuck it around a bit at smaller speeds and tighter areas on tighter, twistier roads. It actually feels quite agile. And that's definitely because of that rear wheel steering. It makes the car just turn in better. It makes it feel more light and it makes it turn more, if that makes sense. With the back wheels turning the opposite way to the front wheels, the car turns harder. The arc is tighter. So that's what you feel. That's what makes it feel agile. Um, it's a really, really clever piece of technology. And I've driven Mercedes-Benz's product with the same thing and it doesn't do the same sort of effect. It doesn't have the same effect is what I'm trying to say. Not all rear wheel steering systems are cut the same. The Mercedes AMG one doesn't feel like this one. This one genuinely adds to the experience. And to be honest, if I didn't tell you it had it, you wouldn't have noticed. If you jump in a Mercedes-Benz EQS AMG, for example, you do notice it has it because the car turns diagonally when you turn the wheel. This car feels natural. That's what I'm trying to say. Long to short of it, the rear wheel steering in this car feels natural. It makes the car feel lighter and it's clearly been designed by boffins who love driving. So yeah, rear wheel steering, ace in this car. Makes it feel better at lower speeds, makes it more enjoyable. But even on this faster stuff here, I'm going pretty fast and look, it doesn't feel super alive. Like the car is just soaking it up. It's not caring. It doesn't feel like it's phased. It doesn't feel like yeah, like you're just getting anything out of it because to be honest, I've got to be doing 150 through here and if I was doing 150 through here, I would go to jail. So yeah, basically, if you want to use this car on the road, you're going to go to prison. So if you'd like to drop the soap, buy this car because that's where you're going to end up, right? It's, it's, it's a bit of a crux with it, to be honest with you. I find it challenging to accept because I love driving cars a little bit hard on the street. I'm not saying that because I'm a hoon. I'm just saying, like most of us, we go on a back road on the weekend with our friends to maybe go a little bit over the speed limit, perhaps in an area where no one is, I'm being honest here for a second, and maybe enjoy your car a bit. That's why we have performance cars. We can't afford to be on the track every day, so we like to drive them out in the bush where all we can hurt is ourselves. And to be honest, this car maybe is a bit too much for that even. Like, I'll just put it into third gear now and show you what I mean. Like, it's just achingly fast. That's way too fast to be going on the road. Like, it's just silly. So, to be fair, you don't get a sense of enjoyment out of this car like you'd expect because you're forever worrying if you're going to end up at Silverwater Jail, which is actually quite annoying. But, again, if you want the everyday supercar killer, if you want to go up to the snow with your kids and your dog and your annoying partner, and you've had a shit weekend with him and on the way home, you bump into a 911 and you just want to slap him up, this is your car. It's literally going to do that. You're going to punish everyone on the road in it with your family in it. So I see its purpose. But if it's for you, if you're not trying to prove a point to old mate in the Porsche, 
you might be a bit let down because you might be like, I'm not getting nothing from this. I have to go and slap people with it to get something out of it, which is not the best. The best cars, to be honest, are the ones that you can enjoy by yourself and come into a rhythm with. This one, it's a bit much and it's a bit big for that, so it does affect how it feels. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna roll back to the showroom and I'm gonna tell you what its best feature is or what I love about it the most. Objectively speaking for a second, this car is still the car enthusiast's wet dream. It still is the ultimate everyday family car that can beat up a 911 with your dog in the back. So yes, Audi RS6 gets top marks. Powertrain, 11 out of 10. Eight-speed torque converter, speaking of powertrain, exceptional. Ride and handling, spot on. Brakes, 440 mil, massive. But speaking subjectively for a second, it did leave me feeling a little bit cold. This car does have a lot of digitization in it that gets in the way of a good time. You can feel all of your inputs are processed, the throttle pedal is not consistent, and there are some things about it that just show you that computers are determining the outcomes for you. So, if that will bother you, you're probably better off in an old car or buying an old car to keep with this car. But look, have a look at it for a second in the B-roll. It looks incredible. You can't deny this car still looks 11 out of 10. And we've also left you a nice surprise at the end. So make sure you watch that, and thanks for watching guys, we appreciate it.